What's up? Welcome to the Fresh Perspective. I'm your host, Johnny Fresh. I am here with none other than my brother, Greg Yuna. Greg, welcome to the Fresh Perspective. Thank you for having me. I wish we had a little round of applause button right now. We could hit like. Can we three. add that in there though? You can add that yeah, in there no, later. No, we, we can make it happen. Haven't done it yet, but um, Greg, thank you for coming here. Appreciate you. I know it's a fucking hike to come out here, but uh, dude, Long Island. Taking the drive, I appreciate you. Um, for people who don't know you, maybe give a little background synopsis, who you are and what you do. I'm Greg Yuna. I'm born and raised in Queens, and um, I, I do jewelry. I, I make jewelry for, you know, some special people. What, what do you call yourself? I was looking at the other day, and I was trying to make the ask the questions that people wanted to ask. Is it, uh, are you a jewelry designer? Would you, like, first and foremost, I, obviously I'd, I know at this point you're much bigger than that, but... I'd like to consider myself as an artist. Okay. I would. You, know, you, you are. It's not, yeah, I, I, I mean... That's what I feel. You're a creator. Creator. I like to create. Um, that's it. But can we talk about these coasters real quick? The flyest coasters in the game. Fly, can we show? Can, can I yeah. I, I mean, I didn't want Greg to think that if you look back and check the tapes, these are actually in every single podcast I've done so far. But these, these, these this coasters is are nice. Fire. There's a little rose gold pendants in there that he made of ridiculous. So why don't we tell? Why don't I? Why don't I switch it up? Why don't we tell them how we met? Yeah. So they can have a better understanding. Yeah, we could do that. So 2000 and I want to say 13. Could be 13, could be 14. I'm not really sure. Uh, that's when I think you really started to pop uh, as far as IG wise, mm -hmm. getting recognition of what it was. I had saw you actually with Floyd uh, Mayweather. That's how I first you caught my eye. And then we had a couple mutual friends mm -hmm. on social media. And I remember at that time I was looking for a watch. I remember coming into 47th Street to come check you. And I remember the first thing I did, I'm pretty sure I bought a watch off your wrist. It was the sneaker. That's right. It was a sneaker. Hold on one second. Everybody stop. Yo. Let me let me run, run let me let me run the show a little bit. Val, can you do me can you pass me that sneaker right behind you right there? Lightly there. Don't don't finger fuck it. Just pick it up nicely. Walk over here real quick. Don't throw it. Don't throw it. Don't throw it. Don't throw it. I said, yeah, thank you. Now get the fuck out, out of this shit. I completely anyway. forgot about this. This is hilarious. So I don't know what camera am I looking at? So right now, that's the one on the right. So basically, uh, I was look, looking to make custom kicks at the time. This is when the custom kick game started really popping off. The guy Mosh, uh, M-A-C-H-E, who still is, in my opinion, probably the best, or at least one of the best sneaker customizers in the game. Uh, we collaborated on this using all white Jordan 11s. These are so uh, fire. And we used gold paint to do two tones. You see gold and white. And then I brought it to Greg. This to, is 18 karat gold, by the way. To put real gold Jordan emblems on it and real gold lace tips on it. What year was this? I, I want to say it's 2013. I, I, I remember coming to the idea and I remember being like, I wonder if he's going to be with it or if he's just going to like, get the fuck out of my face. It was, 2011. It was 2011. No. 2011. I started in 09 and three years later. No way. 2011. But anyway, that's that's a year, whatever. Yeah, but for these, I mean, any I came in, I told him the ideas, I fucking love it, let's do it. And after that, that was it. And that was how the friendship began. Um, I like that you were very particular. You, you know what you wanted. Yeah, and, I knew and, every detail. I and I'm like, like can you do that? You're like, 100%. The hardest part was getting these fucking things put on the show. Can shirt. I leave this here? Yeah, sure. Is it in the camera? It should stay here. That's so good. There we go. That's wow. That's a that's amazing. I forgot about that completely. Right. So I remember after that, then uh, the next time I came to see you after I had the shoes made, I pulled up and I was the day Floyd was actually there. Mm -hmm. And one of the cooler experiences I've had in my life. I didn't also had no idea what to expect with Floyd Mayweather if he was going to be cool, if he was going to be an asshole. And obviously he has his persona when he has to sell fights. But Floyd is one of the fucking coolest down to earth guys. Cool cat, man. And if you talk about like pound for pound with money compared to how cool he is, there aren't many people I know like that. He, I walked in, I went to go say what up to you. And he had like, you know, he's only like five, five, six. What is he? Five, 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 seven, maybe. I'm taller than him. Let's, say, let's put that. I think he's five, way. seven. Okay. That's, that's generous probably. Uh, so I'm like going to say, well, I didn't even see him. I went to go say what up to you. And it's like three, seven foot bodyguards around him. And they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. where the fuck you going? They go to stop me. And you're like, no, no, he's cool. Come here. Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, Flo looks at me. I mean, I thought, excuse me. Already. I didn't say it. <laughs> uh, fucking, uh. Floyd looks at me and he grabs my wrist, looks at the watch I'm looking at. You think that, that's pretty cool? Check this out. And he pulls out a fucking suitcase. This man is walking around with, with a, a suitcase. suitcase full of watches. I'm talking about gridded out, like the one that you keep in your house. He's walking around with it. I think it had like 36 watches in it. Shit, it's crocodile skin, all custom pieces. 
and he starts showing me them one by one. This one's a million dollar watch. This one custom Audemars. This one. He's Jacob. into that. He's into it. He, he, he likes, you know, he, especially mind. when he sees somebody with, you know, that knows what they're doing. Right. You came in. You always had nice pieces. And I feel like he appreciated someone who knew what was going on. Yeah, I mean, he, and he was just, he took about a half hour out of his day, sitting there just chopping it up and we bullshit with me. But he really, that, that's what he enjoys to do. He likes to come to the city, you know, he loves jewelry. He goes and he spends some time at a jewelry store and he kicks it with us. And I had know. his money, I'd do the same thing. Um, great dude man. though, man. That guy changed my life for real. Shout out Floyd. So is that, so the, I mean, everybody who's been asking, and I'm curious, I want to know too, because I know you, but I'm not gonna sit there and pick picking your brain about right. your journey into the jewelry game. I know you don't, you don't come from a jewelry family in particular. I do not. So how did you get into the jewelry game? Um, I started working for some, some you know, second and third cousins and stuff like that. And uh, But what, what, why was it? Like, what made you go to jewelry? Is there something to fill the time at the point? Did I wasn't you know really, you wanted to be into jewelry? I was into mortgages. I, not mortgages. I was, in a, I was in real estate before that. Okay. And it was just, that time, it was just, there was nothing going on. Yeah, during a crisis. It was just... Literally, and I was just sitting home. I was my brother just started an appraisal company, and he was like, "Look, let's, let's do this. See what we could, we could, you know, how we could milk it." And then, um, my did mom, you have any idea at the time you were going to be doing designing? No, at that point, it's just like I didn't makes, even. I was scared. Money. I was scared. I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. It was just like because I, I knew, I, I knew I was destined for something. As a kid, I was always like a big dreamer, but I just didn't know what it was going to be. I can't sing. I can't rap. I could barely dance. You know what I mean? <laughs> Talk a lot of shit, but yeah. like, and um, I got into this space, didn't like it when I was there, and I ended up just well, I'm sure it wasn't a creative aspect when you first got right, there, but right? I got there, it was sales, just, it, more or less, yeah, right? it was sales, and I'm like, I don't know anything about any of this shit. Like, I, I didn't even like, like, I like the aesthetics of diamonds and all that stuff, but like, I wasn't really into it like that, I didn't know. I knew what a Rolex was, but like I didn't know there was a hundred models. I remember, I remember the first time I came in there looking for jewelry, and then Floyd had some thing he traded in. It was this big, fat ass fucking diamond bracelet. And I'm like, yo, I want that. You look at me like this is you trying to sell me, but you're right. not selling me. You're mm -hmm. like, yeah, jewelry's a waste of money. Don't buy that. But it, but I think it is. It is. I, you know, I, I, but, I, listen, but you were that honest with me, you know, and I was like, all right, like I respect that. And I love that. But look, my whole thing is like, I, how many cars have we had? Yeah, right? like it, this shit's all a waste of money. We know that. No matter, yeah. my mom, my dad could tell me, "Listen, that car's a waste of money." I know that. I'm still gonna get it. Yeah. So, like me saying that, I'm just putting it out there, cause I don't want it back. I don't want it back. Yeah. But anyway, um, I got into the game. I didn't really like being in sales so much, but I was good with people. I spoke the language, and um, and the diamond district over there is all, that's all Jewish, it's all, Russian, Jewish, Russian, and there. You, you know, fit in pretty good. Yeah, it was. I mean. I fit in pretty good to you, but I stand out to them. Why is that? Because, like, we're, we're all the same. Like, we come from the same culture, but we're not. Obviously, we're not the same. What is nuances within the culture that, like, Yeah, there's just a lot of shit going on in there. And, you know, there's a lot of, I feel like there's a lot of hatred, you know, because when I got there, I was cool with so many people, and, you know what I mean, that I would see outside of 47th Street. And then, like, once you see these people, it's like a big, it's like a college campus. Yeah, you go there. You see these people every day. You stop saying what's up to people. You're just like, you know what I mean? It's, yeah, it gets, it's a good old boy club too. Probably it, it gets it gets weird. Everyone, it's just cutthroat. No one. It's just it's just the dirty spots. So to find someone that's solid there is 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 cool. So I keep all the solid guys with me. Shout out to Avi and Co. That's my guy. Solid dude. Avi's spot is sick too. Avi's place is incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. He's doing big things. Good for him, man. And uh, so you start off on the sales floor, basically. How did you make the transition to get into the designing part? How did you get so, creative with it? So I always loved rosary beads. I remember growing up being a Jewish kid, like I couldn't wear rosary beads. So one time I went to my friend's house. His name was Sylvester, a Filipino cat. And I, his family was religious. And his... Most Filipinos are. Yeah, so like, yeah. I think so too. Yeah. Uh, he had a pair of rosary beads that were glow-in-the-dark plastic like I was like, yeah, club and, and I, the reason why I was sleeping over is because we were going to um, what's that um, the end of the school year uh, uh, went to like Great Adventure for the, at the end like of the Six year. Flags, something? yeah. But what do you call that? I anyway, my school wasn't cool like that. We ended up going to Great Adventure. I slept over the night before, and this is high school. I this is this is this is elementary school. This is, this oh, is sixth shit. grade, <laughs> and. I remember these, the, you know, his dad let me hold them, and I'm like, yo, I'm Jewish. I'm not, am I going to melt holding this shit right now? Like, I don't, you know what I mean? I don't know. 
but I, but I just cool. I just fell in love with them and the way they like wore it. And so I threw it on and glue in the dark. I'm like, yo, this is fire. And I hope my mom won't kill me. My dad won't kill me. I'm sorry about this. The whole day, the next day at Great Adventure, I had his dad gave him to me. I was like, yo, this <laughs> you is wearing him? My homegirls were like, yo, what are you doing? You're Jewish. I'm like, ah, uh, not today. whatever, not today. <laughs> but I, I fell in love with them. So from that day, I appreciated rosary beads. And I remember my whole life, I'm like, damn, this is like, it's just the way it, it stuck with you. Just, it, it's it, still it, fucking weird. It, I think it's going to be a child that stick with you like it, that. It's, it's nuts. So, but anyway, fast forward to 2009. Um, I made my own set of rosary beads. So what I did was... With a cross? No. With a Jewish star in the middle instead of the Mother Mary. And it would drop down into the into the Hamsa, which is the... The hand? The hand. And people would come in. And I made it for myself. Yeah. Something I wanted to do. And people would come in and they were going crazy for it. Floyd came in one day and he was like, yo, I want that. Is he Jewish? Nah, but it's not even, it, it's not, it, <laughs> it's, it's just, just it just, it was just one of those things. But the hands also, I feel like universal. Yeah, I mean, it's star just. Star David, not so much, but. I mean, the star is a star, you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know if I, I don't know it's if I'd a, wear it's, it. It's a six I point appreciate star. appreciate how cool it is. So I feel, I felt it, it was cool. I wore it for myself. It wasn't even on a, on a I wasn't even trying to sell it. I'm like, I'm, I'm working in a jewelry store. Let me just make something for myself, whatever. And Floyd came in and he ended up getting that and getting four more. So I was like, yo. So I once he cleaned us out with that, I was like, all right, There's let me go make some is... more. So while I was in the process of making things, I started learning the business a little bit. Then I made myself a Chuck Taylor sneaker. I was like, what's a classic shoe? The I pendant? Put? The pendant. I remember when you did that. And then you made the Jordan. Right. You made one of these right. Concords, though. Right. So when I would when I would make them, they would sell off my neck. So I'm like, you know what? I got something going on here. Yeah, and then Instagram and then Instagram came out, changed my life. I had a, you know, a channel to, you know, display all this stuff. So for me, it was just, all right. Oh, that's how this it's funny. That's how this right now we're here because of Instagram. That's how I that's and, how I feel. I mean, I might have eventually crossed paths with you anyway, but that's how and, I came in there to begin with. Instagram and Floyd Mayweather changed my life. And I and I'll forever uh, I'll forever say that. So crazy. And so that's that's my first watch I bought from you was off your wrist. Same thing. You were wearing uh a leather uh, alligator band Hublot, mm -hmm. all bust down that you did. Mm -hmm. That's when Hublots were fire. Yeah, but mine just is 2011 or 12. Uh, and Jay Z just dropped that line. He said, uh, "What do you say about Hublot got a gator band, culture Tebow or something like that?" I mean, that's when he that's when he had the well, that's when he had his own collaboration with Hublot, no? Yeah. So Hublot was popping then, um, and I I remember seeing it on your wrist. I'm like, he's like, I'm like, which one do you want? I'm like that one. And here you go, boom. And that was it. And that's when we first started doing business together. That was my job. But, was but like, you were you, always easy. We clicked, but we clicked. We clicked. I feel like you came in, you were into the sneakers. We, you know, we had a little relationship outside of the, the jewelry shit. We yeah, always, well, we always it, when you own. meet people, you know, they're on the same wavelength as you. Yeah. It, it, it happens fast. But um, kept coming back. We did a lot of business. I brought a lot of people over there. But you are your own billboard. You are you market yourself 24-7. Um, I say this, I don't say this to blow smoke. But I feel like at this point, you become sort of like a... I don't know how well I to put it, but you're like a cultural icon. You're like a, a, a real staple in the culture out there. You have your hands in a lot of different things. I appreciate I that. I mean, people don't know how much, how many collaborations and how much work. And I mean, I've seen the grind you've been doing now, you know, over a decade, but it's amazing to see you do deals with major brands, uh, clothing brands, sneaker brands, alcohol brands, uh, movies, obviously the jewelry, clothing. Uh, I mean, I just got goosebumps. Yeah, it's it's crazy. It's a it's, nice feeling. It's fucking crazy to see, and it's crazy to see where you were when I met you and where you are now, and I'm and tend to think, you know, five, ten years from now, where everything will be, the trajectory stays the same. It's amazing, bro. It really is. It's fucking I'm, awesome to watch. I was just uh, so I was saying, like, I'm I'm so happy doing. This is what the uh, conversation was and and was coming to. I'm so happy doing what I'm doing. It's literally like, I wake up in the morning and I drive to my living room. My office is like it's set up yeah. like a living room. You know what I mean? Yep. I, I really enjoy what I do. We so do when you say love. so when you say ten years from now, it's like it's not work for me. And I I hate how cliche it sounds, but it's but it's, it's the truth. so it's so true. One hundred percent the truth. It's so true. So people want to know a little bit. And I want to know a little bit too. Like what actually goes into that design process? Like you have an idea. So I, I, the thing I love most about creating is when something in my head become you know materializes. Mm -hmm. Right, the fresh. Like I saw this logo in my head exactly how it is. 
then it came to life. Every package I did, every product I made, the studio, everything we do. So in your head, you get an idea like a Chuck Taylor. Let's, let's just start there. And you had to say, I want to make a jewelry piece for Chuck Taylor. Where the fuck do you even start? Like, what do you do? Do you, do you get a 3D printer? Like, I mean, work? first, you could be creative all you want, right? But you need a team. Oh, uh, yeah, 100%. You, you like, I don't care who you are, you need a team. And I, I feel like I really, you know, like handpicked a really elite team. You know, Jay Frost is one of the most creative people I know. Shout out Jay Shout Frost. Shout out to Jay Frost. I have Ra Rachel. Hoop right there. Yeah. Uh, Rachel, we got her. Rachel Goatley. Goatley she's she's goat. on fire. We have you know her, what I mean? her print right there. Right. And then I have, I got my brother, you know, I got my brother who, you know, he puts his little two cents in. And um, I got this kid, Zach, right now. That's just like, I have a really good team that looks out. So, um. You come to me with the design, I, 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 you know, talk it over with my team, and you know, Rachel. But how physically do they bring it to life? Like, how does that go down? You have to draw it in a in a computer. I have Rachel. Work? Rachel's on the one and two on, on, on the computer, you stuff. know, and then I send it to my model makers, and then we we figure out what we're gonna do. It's just basically just throwing all these ingredients into a little pot. Shout out Rachel, and then we stir it up. We'll put a link in after some of Rachel's stuff too, because she does these digital prints where she makes. Like uh, posters and artwork. Both of them right now. Frost too. He's doing. He's that that um that black and white stuff he's doing. Yeah, with like the the word you can't see. I love the hoodies it's, and shit. It's and fire and the, it's, the, it's, the, it's the catchy. And it's so simple. It's clean. Rachel is just like on a. She's 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 gonna. She's a gem. You know. Yes, yeah, so I'm. I'm gonna put a picture up in the video too. Like a, actually, Joey, see if you can pull that up. You can go to Rachel Goatley on Instagram. So I'm one of the tabs up there on the screen. She makes basically uh, like this digital art out of jewelry. So it's this. It, it, it'll be a painting or a drawing. It looks like I seen she did Biggie. I, I can't say what she did. The picture that I have over here. That's um, what's what's the proper way of saying vagina? A lady part, and uh, it basically comes down okay. to made of cuban links made of diamonds made of watches and i don't know how the fuck she's like a savant that she can see that in her head because i she I doesn't know, know how she, she doesn't know how popping she is I, I she's though she's popping i always tell her i always day her, and every time she puts something i tell y'all yeah, this is fucking fire because i feel like maybe she needs a little reassurance sometimes because she is super dope humble kid yeah all of them she, yeah all of them are humble and that's what you need, though. You need, everyone has this common goal. So I love coming over there and seeing you guys all work together because everybody's hungry, everybody's creative, everybody's. Yeah, look at this shit. Like made it. Look at that. Look at the Playboy bunny, the heart. Mm -hmm. This shit is crazy. The Game Boy. Like all this is exciting. You know, all our all all, all our worlds. Blah. All our worlds, like just fucking integrate. When money when money is a little uh, is flowing a little more than it is right now, I'd love to see if we could bring one of these things to life and do it like. We're actually we're, we're actually working on one right now. The dollar bill, the hundred dollar bill we're doing to, with real stones. Yeah, well, it... we're gonna try to finesse as much as we can, and uh, then frame that. Yeah, that'll be crazy. That's fire. Yeah, fuck so yeah. but that that kind of stuff takes time. It's not like a and a lot of money. I mean, yeah, yeah look how many yeah. jewels are in this thing. She's super, fire. super dope. And then you have a little extended team. And uh, I had a lot of people asking me questions before I have all the guests come on. I put it out there on Instagram, say any questions you would like uh, you know, me to ask. And I had a bunch of people asking for, how the hell did you meet Joe, David, and Wendy? And where did they come from? And how did, they, how did that happen? Fucking for those of you who don't know, uh, Joe, David, and Wendy are... I guess extended parts of the team. I love them. That's my family. That come to his office on a daily basis, and they are characters. And they, I mean, really, you guys need a reality show at this point. But uh, for people who know who they are, what, exactly how'd that come to be? I met so Wendy is an old, just I mean, this is what she told me. So I'm not, I'm not, you know, she she used to be a prostitute. Okay. And as she got older, she couldn't work anymore. And I mean, she had a little, you know, a, a, a tough life, and. One day I saw her, I was going out for lunch out of my, where I used to work in, in the exchange I used to work at. I was walking out of the door and I see this like wild looking lady holding a 22 ounce of beer in a can with a straw, <laughs> a tie dye straw. dress, marijuana glasses and heart headbands that swing back and forth <laughs> holding a sign we buy gold She's a i'm like who is this lady <laughs> and i wrote and while she's smoking a cigarette it's just like hanging off a lip i'm like who are you she's like do you want to buy gold i'm like no i'm in the business you have three dollars <laughs> two or a five you know and i fell in love with her so after i gave her money she would just like always knock on the window and be like hey so i would like always take care of her we just build 
we, you know, we built a relationship of that. I just, I just liked her. She was just always honest. I thought she was funny. Yeah. And we just kind of got into a space like that. Always drunk. I try to get her not to drink, but that's her shit. You yeah. Know? You can't do anything about it. Um, David, he's just a, he's a superstar. You know, he, he dances. He's funny. Um, Joe, he, go to scroll on his Instagram and see if you can find a video of David and them. They, David, they, uh, they almost daily he puts on a dance routine and he takes it so he's actually like pretty good like it's it's so he used to so back in the day he was like he's like he can't, he's, deep, like, he can't he's, he's, he's pushing dancer. 60 you know what i mean he really yeah 50? he's like 58 damn so but like when he was in his like 20s and 30s he was rocking you have any stories up today of him dancing do i have any what do you have a story up today of him dancing no he hasn't been in a couple of days he's been like Handling some stuff at home. That's David on the left. I think I can see from here. Yeah, David's good. These guys are all characters. And Joe, I met and one Joe. day. Big Joe. Joe's in the movie business. Joe was selling DVDs and CDs when when they were already going out of like no one was even watching DVDs. Okay. Or CDs. Yeah. It was like fucking everybody had an iPad and iPod. And shit like <laughs> He's that. still selling DVDs. And I just I you know the hustle. he's just an old head. He has no filter. He doesn't care if you're Floyd Mayweather or he doesn't care. He talks to everyone he the same. Care unless you're Jadakiss. Jada Kiss is his favorite. He's got some crazy thing with Jada Kiss. Money, Jada Kiss, his girlfriend, me. That's it. That's 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 the way it, it goes down. Those are his favorite people. Joe's a cartoon character too. Picture, I mean, he's probably like a six five black guy, and he's but he's a sweetheart. You know, people, oh, nice guy, but he's, he's got a mouth. He has like a, a mouth. Like a if you don't, if you don't know him, and and you just yeah, I don't get offended by it. And 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 you just meet him, you're just like, what the fuck is this? But he's one of the sweetest people Can I know. Can we call Joe? Very. Let's check in with Joe, see what he's Joe. doing. Joe. Let's call Joe. Oh my God. Can we zoom in on this? I'm gonna call you back later. You're not calling me back later. Joe, I'm on a I'm on a podcast, Joe. Say hello to Johnny Fresh. We're live, Joe. Everybody was people were asking me, I put out a question to say. What do people want to know about Greg? And about 10 people said, how'd you meet Joe? You want to know more about Joe? So that's why we're calling you. What I want to say about Greg, Greg is the best guy in the whole world. He's a genius, and I love him. If they want to know about me, I'm the baddest motherfucker in the world. That's what they can do. <laughs> Who's your favorite rapper, Joe? Teddy Kiss. I just heard his ass on 2016. Teddy, I love you, motherfucker. Oh. I want to have my wedding. Oh. <laughs> All right, we're going to try. So Joe's getting married on... Uh, February 14th this year. Congratulations, I'm Joe. I don't, know, I don't want people to know when we leave it. Okay, but Yo, up there, you see me working? I'm, I'm over here working so I can pay for your wedding. Joe, we can, we can get the mass certificate because there's no public records. We could. I got, okay, I ha you don't have to talk about such a personal shit all the time. I know, I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm just on the phone, you know? Okay. Do you, wanna, do you wanna say anything to the viewers of Johnny Fresh? Yes. Go ahead. I want to say I'm so glad that I can work with Greg Yuna. He's the best guy in the whole world. Thank you, Joe. We dance shit up, motherfucker. Hey, get your money together because we selling diamonds, bitch. Oh, okay. All right, I got to go, Joe. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for picking up. What are you coming in tomorrow for? To take care of my fucking bills. I need a week's pay. Go. Goodbye. Guess what? Between me. All right. Between me and you, I, what? I want to hear this. Between me and you and a thousand no, people listening. Greg just sent me a text, you know. So, it's not a big thing. You know how jealousy go around this girl, how she get the number and all that shit. All right, Joe. God, God bless your soul. Bye. Jesus Christ. That's Joe. No filter. That's, that's There's a do. taste of what the, what the office Joe. is like on a daily basis. Right, so... But I, I, you know, I, I enjoy taking care of these people. You know what I mean? Like, it's a, it's, it's, it's it's a good, it's a good feeling because when, with, you know, the place where I used to work, like, nobody... Nobody fucked with them. I'm sure. Nobody wanted them around. Nobody would even look at them on the block. And but now they give you shit for bringing them around. Yeah, they would come in, ask for money, do you know? And I would do little skits with them on. That's when um, what was it? What was popping? What's that app? Fuck. Vine. No. Uh, Snapchat. Okay. Shit. I was heavy on Snapchat with it, but then it just became too much work to do Snapchat. And then Instagram came out with the Snapchat. The people that, still, that, do people that, snap. I don't snap still. Once Instagram came out with that option that you could do it like that, I was finished with that. Young kids do. Yeah, I'm sure it's, it's like, still. Hey, how do you do it all? How do you have time to right. TikTok, Snap, I like to keep Instagram. it on, on one um application, but and now the, the new app actually that everyone keeps talking about, and we I know that you're heavy on it. I don't want to say heavy, but you're you're early on it. Is Clubhouse? I think Clubhouse is a beautiful um application. It seems to be the next wave. It seems to be other than I guess Parlor's dead. So it seems to be the fastest growing app out now. I mean, people are really like. 
you can go there for so much information. You can literally follow anyone you want, and like if you know. So for people who don't know, uh, Clubhouse is. I'm sorry, not Clubhouse. Clubhouse. Oh, yes, Clubhouse. Okay, I'm sure. Clubhouse is an app that is more or less like a, a conference call you get to listen into. It's a big podcast. It's a big conference call. Yeah, it's like a, it's like listening to a conference call of important people talking. So you don't get to actually speak. You're kind of muted on the conference call, but it'll be a group of people talking and whatever the you know the whatever the meeting is, whatever the topic is. Like Greg does it, I'm sure you probably with uh, you with Ben Baller. We did we did we did one the other day with with Ben Baller, and it was it was actually a success. You know, he you know we were out there talking some jewelry talk. And now it, basically, it's like inside access you would never get otherwise. Right. So I mean, when else you get to hear an inside conversation between Greg and Ben Baller? Never. And it's not only important people. It's 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 in, in general like people go there to to you can go there and just listen in. I think it's a good learning tool. It's though. absolutely a good. I learning saw tool. a couple of guys that I know that I I look up to look up to in the business world. Dan mm -hmm. Fleischman, mm -hmm. uh, Aaron Wags. Okay, like those guys. I love I love Aaron Wagner, man. That's your boy. He's, he's a good dude. He seems like a cool. He he, li he likes to have a good time. He's a smart cookie. Very 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 good in, in business. Savage. Yeah. But cool cat. I like cool dudes that are savages. You know what I mean? Not 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 um. Not not this. Yeah, not stuck up. Yeah. Now he's cool as hell. He seems like it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Clubhouse is taking off right now. What, what's your take on it? I think it's, 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 I mean, there's always that next thing, right? It's but like are you going to stay on it? Are you going to be heavy on I'll it? I'll pop in here and there. Yeah. I just, you know, there's a lot going on, but I pop in. I'm such, I'm such a visual learner. I get too bored, but just like listening like that. But when there's a good conversation, that's what, like I, I go I in. in it though. Yeah, exactly. It's not, it's not. I can't, I can't passively listen. Nah, I'll be sitting not, there one on the screen. Right. It's not one of those apps that you go and just like you have to really like like the room that you're in what's the point of being in it it's like you're walking into a club a regular club if you walk into one oak and the what's shit is club? dead exactly you walk into one oak when it was open and it was dead but walking out yeah i'm isn't not it, buying bottles in here <laughs> i'm not investing in this one isn't it fucking weird how i, I mean have you gone to, have you gone to any clubs have you gone to florida or anything been away i just want to say before like 20 2020 20 was a fucked up year yeah besides like the bad shit that happened it was a, it was it was a very good year for me spiritually okay you know Why? uh i just learned a lot about myself just you know with 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 all the quarantine shit going on and all that and just like what, the, being alone a lot be, not even being alone because we went you know i was with we, me val we just we ended up traveling we ended up like leaving and shit like we just you think having less distractions made you more able I, to kind of like i would in? it was I, I wasn't able to shut off since the age of like 13. I have ADHD. I have all this fucking... Yeah, you're always on go. I'm, I'm always on go. I'll go on vacation, try to relax. I'm on the beach with my phone. You yeah. know, I could... It's just like... It doesn't stop. And mm -hmm. I'm always like... I don't want to miss out on money. I don't want to miss out on anything. And, you know, the first three weeks of quarantine, my cell phone literally stopped ringing and I, I stopped getting texts. The only person that was texting me is me, my mom, my brother. That's it. There was, there was nothing going on. What, because work was just dead? It was just, I, I didn't have access to go. It, everything was shut down. Oh, so shit. the fact that it was, it, that the fact that like no one was making money made me feel better because I was like, all right. You're not missing anything. I'm not missing anything. I had a similar feeling to that. Um, I just felt like, okay, like if nothing's going on for me, at least I know the whole world's on. Place. Right. No, no. So that being said, my phone just stopped and I was able to actually like relax and kind of like. And what do you think you took out of that? that time? I was just able to like, just reflect. But no, more appreciative, you think? Yeah, absolutely. I was able to see what, first of all, see what money's, because I'm not making any money at the time. So I'm seeing what's coming out, all the bullshit little Netflixes, and, and you know, I'm have I'm like four applications in with the, with uh, Spotify, uh, yeah. I, you know, iTunes, all that. I'm like, why am I on four? Like, why am I paying 11 bucks on each of them? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Are you going to go like, back to the clubs when they open up? I, love, I mean, listen, I love to go out here and there. I was just in Miami, you know, it, it, it's all the way open. It's, it's, I think barring vacation, man, I don't know if I'll be able to go out anymore. I, I, I'm so removed now. I was already kind of getting, like, getting over it. Now, I don't know. I don't know. I think, I think we'll, we'll, we'll get past it and we'll be able to get back into it. I, whoever I'm, I, I'm, I'm like a, I, I'm a social butterfly, you know, so I need yeah. that. I need that some, you know, get it out of my system sometimes. I like going to dinner now more. Oh, I mean, yo, do that Miami is so popping. Poppy steak is like poppy and swan. Yeah. Shout out to fucking Grutman. Dave Grutman and, and, and Dave Horn and all them. But like they, those guys got it on lock over there. It's like the best places you could be for dinner. And I'm not even talking about like the, the food at poppy steak is incredible, but forget like food aside, just the atmosphere and, and, and the vibe is, is just fun. Yeah, it's always a fucking scene. Miami's a, 
my, I, I, I hold a, you know, yeah, uh, I hold, it's a, it's a, yeah. Yeah, it, I'm, it, I'm out here. I'm out of here to New York. I'm into Florida as soon as I fucking can. Uh, hopefully some point 2021. I don't care what shape I'm in. As soon as I touch down in Miami, I feel sexy. <laughs> That's just one of those places. Yeah. Uh, everybody loves fucking the sixth borough. It's the sixth borough. Yeah. I like that. I heard that one time. I never left that one. Um, so I like that too. Going That's back to what I was saying before though, you've had a lot of collaborations. Um, in your past, I've seen you with already. You see, I've seen you with Reebok. I've seen you with Puma. Uh, when no, it, no, I don't think Reebok. We do Reebok. Yeah, you sure? No, it's Fila. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right, Fila. No Reebok. That's right. It was Fila. Those black and gold joints. We did Fila. We had two. We had two of them. How did something two. like that come about? They approached you. Yeah, they approached me. They wanted to do a collab. I was like, all right, cool. You know what I mean? I Joey, mean, see I, people pull it up. Pull up the. Uh... I grew up wearing Fila, so for me, it was a no brainer. I like to see Fila coming back. Remember uh, two, three years ago, I was in uh, Neiman Marcus and I came across a, a Fila tracksuit. Mm -hmm. And I was just like so happy to spend waste $200 on that thing because uh, Fila is like the old school guinea. You know, it's a, a staple. It's a staple. Yeah. I hate to see stuff like that die out. But then I also love you the might, fear being revived. You might, I think you're going to like what I'm trying to bring back then. Remember the old school Sean John Valor suits? Yeah. I want to bring those back with like the new style. Like, Better fit in jogger bottoms, mm -hmm. but like velour suits. You ever have a juicy suit back in the day for men? No. Nah. Not a lot of people know about that. Nah. Uh, around, nah. Nah. Nah? Nah. Okay. Nah. You wasn't up on it then? No, nah, I knew they existed. I just. But uh, you wasn't fucking with it. I couldn't. I just no? couldn't myself to do it. Nah. Not me. I, I was every a George John Velour guy. All right. I wasn't that jabby. Okay. Those weren't the ones that I have. All right. Are those other ones? The shoes. Where are we? Yeah. So the, that's the first collab we did. The second one was like a, a I actually had like that shoe as a kid though or something like And then the other one we did a campaign for them for the the fuck what was it called the, the Luna something Look those are the those are the pennants Joe you see that right there the diamonds You know we're in old school territory click on that Yeah Oh this is a That's the uh, that, that's that's the that's the Jordan one um the Virgil. It was a couple years ago though Yeah you well, look first, at the detail on that. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. It looks it, that is exactly what the shoe looks like. Even the, look at the detail on the shoelaces, the Virgil shits, and like jewelers can't do that. No, because if they could, they would, and and, and they can't. <laughs> I'd never seen. I mean, maybe they do now, but I remember when you first started doing. I didn't see they, no they one skip, else they, doing that. They shit. skip seams. They they like that, that. That's what I had a problem with being on that block. You know, you make something and then. You know, two weeks later, it's watered down and it's all fucking. Well, everyone copies it. They copy it, but they like skip out on so many details to make it cheaper, and like they cut so many corners. And then people, if you're not a sneakerhead and you don't know, you're buying it to be cool. You know? Yeah, no, fuck that. We make our own sneakers. Yaman. So what do you got going on now? I see that you're doing M Jewelers now also. So M, so I partnered up with M Jewelers. Shout out to fucking Mark Shammy and them and, and that whole team. Um, so I have uh, Chapter Two by Greg Uno over there. So I, I, you know, we supply a. So you have your own line with M Jewelers now. Yeah. So M Jewelers is one of the bigger jeweler distributors in in the world, I guess, uh, retail wise. And uh, Greg got his own line, and you designed all the pieces yourself. We designed most of the pieces. You and the whole team. Well, they they send me some stuff. I sign off on it. But, you know, our first collection with them was all us. You know, that's how we introduced it to them. And, I mean, it's been it's been doing good. You know, it's a lower-hanging fruit for people to, you know. It's like, yeah, it's like entry-level entry like, level jewelry. It's like, how much shit do you see of mine that you like that you want to buy, right? It's yeah, like, you can't buy it. You can't buy Exactly. You can't, you can't buy it all because, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. This is for the people that just, like, are addicted to jewelry and just want to buy shit but, like, don't want to go crazy. Yeah, and like, like uh, never gross. It's like accessory jewelry. Yeah, it's accessories. But... Uh, not costume jewelry because it's not $20. It's no. a couple hundred. But it's, it's nice. It's not the normal going against right. 10000 Listen, I've been approached by a lot of people who do stuff like that, and they are by far the best. They're the best. Like, Mark Shammy's my... Like, that whole team is great. That's fucking dope. Him, his lady, everybody, they're good. And then we also, I saw you had a, a tequila. I know it was a, a vodka now this time. So, vodka. I'm, I'm I'm part owner of a vodka company. Three kilos. Three kilos. Shout out three kilos. Shout out to three kilos. They have and the now dopest bottle we, in the game. Bottle game those, is crazy. Uh, they look like fucking gold bars, Joe. If you pull that up, yeah. three kilos. Vodka. Shout out to fucking uh, Gabe, Marina, Gary, all of them. Good people. Yeah, we should have. An another crew that uh, look at those bottles. 
Yeah, it's a sexy ass fucking battle. It's a sexy. We ass have a battle. liqueur now that we're rocking with. It's called Pignac. It's a shape of a pineapple, but like it's the most tastiest shit in the world. But what was that other shit I seen you do with eighteen hundred? That's the key. So right? eighteen, yeah. So eighteen hundred reached out to me to do. They wanted me to create. Um, so you have you guys heard of Network? What do you mean? Like this company Network? No. It's, so they are basically hype beast. But they sell products. Okay. So they collaborate with, you know, guys like me or whatever, and then they they, they have a product and they sell it through their uh, social media. Just so you can pull it up, the 18, uh, Greg Una 1800 collab. They reached out to me and they wanted me to create a um, uh, box. So we worked very closely, made that happen. That and, shit looks fucking crazy. And Can you actually buy those? Uh, they did. A, it was very limited. So they did like this little wow. raffle situation, but it's sexy. That's sexy shit. Yeah, it should open up, had lights in it and shit. All that. How much was the bottle? I don't remember what it retailed for. You got one in your collection, right? You got yeah, yeah, yeah. I have one. I have one. Do you drink in it or do you keep it on your counter for I just leave it like that. <laughs> yeah, I don't it's, do the same it's thing. It's pretty. I don't want to touch it. I had those, you had those three, the three kilo bottles you gave me. We had a music video a few years ago. Mm -hmm. we have it. I'll, I'll show you the video. We never released the, it. It's a fun bottle. But uh, yeah, and I, and I kept them on display in my, my uh, kitchen for that like was That was the years. point. I like to make things that people want to put on display. We, we only used them one day. We ran out of alcohol at a, at a party. And we were like, fuck, we got to open it. We got to crack. We didn't want to stop. But they were, that was super, super dope. Right. What are the collabs you got in the works that you can talk about? I got about? a lot of shit I can't talk about. What about the Hummer collab? Hummer was... Hummer is... Hummer's a thing. We're making a piece right now. Um, what are you doing for them or with them? Or just more of a spokesman role? It's... Or you cannot say. It's... It's top secret information. It's, it's not ready yet. Okay. I remember but, seeing that commercial <laughs> though and I was like, God fucking damn. Yeah, That's dope. I mean, with a company like GM... Was it General Motors, right? Mm -hmm. That shit actually looks cool. I like the new Hummer. It's sick. Yeah, and it's all electric. Yeah, eleven hundred horsepower, I believe. It's, it's no, a, no. Yeah, it, it, I think it's a thousand horsepower. Eleven hundred. No, no way. Something like that. It's wild. No way. It's it's wild. It's wild. Joey, Google that. No, so I'm supposed chance. to be a getting the horsepower. I'm supposed to be getting the first one in New York. You're feeling that kratom, I think. You know, you're supposed to be getting the first. I'm one in New supposed York? to be getting the first one in New York. So I saw LeBron got his already. What's going Le on? LeBron got his already, but he's like the main ambassador over there. So he, he's also LeBron. He, he he deserves it, but we're not we're not too far from LeBron. It looks like the uh, the new I, Bronco. I heard from my that's birthday. That's not a real picture. I think that's a rendering. No, that's it. That's it right there. Yeah. It's huge. And a thousand it, horsepower? Yo, it's sick. And the the, the coolest Hold feature on, on it. Yeah, that but, can't be. Go to the GM website. A thousand horsepower? I think it's even 1100 yeah. torque or some shit. What, what are they talking? What about torque? I think like a... Uh, How the fuck could it be a thousand horsepower? The Bugatti's a thousand horsepower. Listen, this thing is... God damn, I have to get one of those. levels. You know, I really fucking like the new Escalade. I like the Escalade. It's the new cool? Escalade, the new body style. Yeah, yeah, cool. like, that cool. is that it. cool, but it's not touching this thing. 11,500. 11,500. It's 1145. 1100. Torque. 50, you mean? Torque. We're talking torque. Can't be. Your, your, stomach, your stomach goes into your, um, what's this, what's this area called on a human body here? Your throat. Neck. <laughs> and it go, it Neck goes throat. How much is it going to come out for? I don't even know. That's fucking insane. What is the battery gonna last? Eight minutes though? How's no, that no, no. It's it's it lasts a minute. It's all it's under the underneath the vehicle. It's thick. The way they created that vehicle is uh, that's the future, man. It's gonna be no more gas cars in like ten years. And it has this thing called crab mode. What's that? So the back wheels yeah. turn. So you can drive it like a crab. Like they go into a parking spot? Yeah. Fire. Are you sure? Are you just trying to sell this thing? I'm I'm listen. <laughs> Check it out. It's all, all the information is there. I sat in it. I got to play with this thing. Is the inside dope? Inside is sick. And the, what I like about it is that you go off road, you fuck it up, do whatever you want, and just spray the whole inside down and just like everything. The way they put it together is incredible. That's fucking sick. And I like how it has the fucking hatchback, the mm -hmm. pickup in the back. Mm -hmm. I think they're only coming out with one color this year. Really? Yeah. But I like that. They do. I guess most cars are those first generation when they first come out, but for a whole I like year, that. This can't be your only car. This is like a perfect like if you have two. I think it's an all around good vehicle. Yeah, damn. The more I'm looking at, it, the more I like it. Like off roading that bitch. 
inside as far as like three tone. I can't believe it has a thousand horse. Look at that screen. Oh, you Jesus see that? Christ. You see the? You see the? Uh, like the speakers and all that. It's all like moon. Like the. It's basically um, the map of the moon. The details in this thing is is, is crazy. Shout out to Hummer. Shout, Shout out, out to GM. Hummer. Everybody likes yeah. a Hummer from yeah. from when you were a kid. They've like they've they've, for a they've long been. Time. I don't think they've made anything that wasn't gangster. The I still H2 want, was it was fired. The little ones, they're all good. I still want an H1. Like when I have, when I get to my point where I can just build a little collection out and have ten cars, you know. I would uh, love a cherry red H1. I want an all black H1. That's fire. Just fucking armied out, biggest douchebag on the road. I don't mm -hmm. give a fuck, and that's what I want. The H2 is a dope. Shamir, you know Shamir from Shadow Group? Mm, no. He was just looking for an H2. He was saying, and those things are so sick too. I remember seeing those. When, when I was in high school, talking 03, 04, 05, speaking of LeBron, he had one of the dopest ones. Mm -hmm. He had one of like 24 inch spinners in like 03 when he was a senior in high Shaq, school. Shaq, I'm sure, had a bunch of them. Yeah, they all did. But like those cars were so dope. G Unit had a crazy one. 50 had a crazy one. That's when the big rims really started popping, popping, right? Yeah. The 24s man. and the 26s. How much was the first car you were able to really do it on? Because they had that meat. You could fucking lift up the car. Now it gets even crazy. Now I have 32s and shit. The but rims yeah. that the, the rim options on this thing is crazy. Man, you're selling me. I'm not trying to. It, it sells itself, the car. And it's electric. It's electric. Yeah, I want to get a Tesla or something. Like, I just got to get an electric car. Get with the times. I'm going with this, man. So when are you supposed to get it? June. They 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 promised me one in June. Damn, so, Brian got his in December. So, so let's see. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. He's LeBron. <laughs> I know. LeBron should I'll be the first person it. in New York to have it, though. That'll be dope for the summer. The top comes off. I think I'm going to keep the top off, even in the rain. Fly shit. Yeah, that's cool. So another one of my favorite things that I've seen you do rather recently, I guess maybe maybe been a year or so now. I lose track of time now with mm -hmm. quarantine. Was uh, your cameo, and actually it was more than a cameo. It was a small part in the movie with Adam Sandler. Mm. That's still surreal to me. What was the name of that movie again? Uh, Uncut Gems. Uncut Gems. So I was. Uh, someone actually sent me a picture of it first. So somebody goes, "Is this your boy?" I was like, "What the fuck." And I wasn't really on IG at that moment. Like I had, I wasn't really like locked in, mm -hmm. and I missed that whole thing. I guess when you were filming it and whatnot, mm -hmm. and uh, I immediately had to go see the movie. And when I did, and so you had like a role in that shit. That was mm -hmm. that was dope mm -hmm. as hell. How'd that happen? Just so I met um, uh, Josh and Sibo. These are the directors, and um, I oh, met the, the two brothers, right? Uh, not the brothers, but the friends. Okay. But the Safdie brothers, are, yes, that's them. Those are the oh, that's what I'm thinking of. Right. Okay. But um, I met I I met so Josh is one of the Safety brothers. Okay, his many. Um, They're I met, young too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool, cool as cats, man. They they Super made another cool. movie with the dude from like uh like the vampire guy Robert Patterson. I forgot. They made another movie. It was very similar, like feel to mm -hmm. the one that you were in, and it was incredible too. Like they packed a it was like a, a two days the whole movie, but it felt like forever. It was just incredible. They're really fucking talented. So how'd you meet them? So uh, they, I was walking at a blue ribbon one day and they were like, yo, and I was like, what the fuck? They're like, yo, what's going on? We love what you do. That's when I was doing the Snapchat shit with Joe, David and Wendy. And they were like, yo, we love. How long goes this? Five years ago. Oh shit. And then they were. That's yeah. how long movie production yeah. takes, huh? And then they, yeah. I mean, no, they came, they came one day and they were like, look, we have this movie that we want. You know, we, we got a part I mean, for what, you. What better? Right. But that but, was like, but God but, sent. but like, I'm in a play, I'm in a, I'm in an industry where everybody's a dick puller. So I don't know what to believe. I'm just like, yeah, yeah, whatever. When, when it's, it's hard to find solid people that are just, you know, anywhere in that, life. that, that, that come street. through. So they were like, yo, we got a part for you. We're, we're doing a movie with Jonah Hill. We, you know, we're just, you know, finishing up the scripts and all that, but we, we want you in it and we'll let you know when it's time. Two years pass. I'm like, all right. And I would bump into them everywhere. Cause we're, you know, same Wait, Jonah Hill, wasn't it? It was supposed to be with Jonah Hill. They ended up switching it up and using Adam Sandler. Thank God he did that. Right. No offense to Jonah Hill. No, but listen, Adam is, Sandler is he's the go legend. Yeah. So um, a year goes by, I'll bump into them. I'm like, yo, what's going on? They're like, yeah, yeah, we got it working. I'm like, all right, whatever. Another year goes by. He's a Long Island dude too, right, Adam Sandler? Yeah. Um, Another year goes by. I'm like, dude, like, what's up with this movie? You know? And they're like, nah, we're, we're, we got you. Don't worry about it. So then I'm like, all right, whatever. Fuck this shit. It. Out of nowhere, they called me like, yo, listen, we're doing character development. Why don't you come to Koreatown right now? We're in, um, we're doing some karaoke stuff right now with Adam. I'm like, I'll be right there. <laughs> Give me 10. So I pulled up. Adam was one of the, like, you would think that Adam Sandler was, would be just a dick. He's one of the, 
I would if I hadn't heard how many times how fucking dope he Yo, is. Yo, he's the. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, there's something, something's wrong. Super cool. That's so like sick. we were practicing our lines and all that shit. I was with, I was on set with him for like two days, three days, and I'm talking about all day. Super cool. Like what mensch, experience. mensch. What's that? He's just a mensch. Like he's a fucking, he's just a sweetheart, he's an angel. That's the Jewish word, right? Wow. I haven't heard that in a while. Mm -hmm. Fuck yeah. Yeah. So in the movie, you played basically yourself. You I, never. You, I, I played a jeweler. Yeah, but like you had, you were making custom pieces. Right. But you had to play yourself. Right. You know, but what, you, what, your name wasn't Greg in the movie, though, right? They gave you another character role. Or? They gave me a flawless character role. My name is flawless in the movie. Okay. Um. So I don't want to get too much into it, but it's one of those weird things that it's just it's something that everyone uh, you know I met you mm -hmm. as flawless. Right. That name. Um, I don't, I'm not allowed to talk about it. Okay. It's not my, you know, I don't even want to, it's just not my, yeah, I got you. Uh, it's just a lot of legal stuff going on there. It's not like I don't want, like, I just, no, I hear you. So you had, you're basically the artist formerly known as this point you had a rebirth and I guess that's the, that's this chapter. It's two. the, it's the best thing that ever happened to me. You know what I mean? I just love that I'm going by my name now, you know, it's yeah, just, it's you just can know by your own name. It's, it's elevated. It's, it's who I am. It's authentic. So, and you had the chance, I feel like, to grow better, grow further in a situation. Right I think now. everything happens for a reason because when when you're in when you're in a situation where everything is just like there's no light at the end of the tunnel, you lose everything, and you're just like, yo, what the fuck am I gonna do? You know, it you just it it, it, so can't, people, it, it doesn't stay dark for long. Yeah. So people don't understand. I know we can't get into the details, but there you were in a prior situation business wise, and essentially a few years ago, you had to basically start from scratch. Yeah, it took off. That's so right. at that point. You know, I'm sure that was a scary part of your part of your life. Horrifying. So because you go from being like, you know, when you I had the name. I, had, I was the top. I was the top jeweler in New York City. Yeah, there's, one thousand. There's, no, there's no doubt about it. One thousand know? percent. And um, you know, you start from scratch and you don't have any social media. And you had to change your name. And right. You to, and you had yes, and you had to start with social media as well. Right. Which was the platform with which you were able to actually get known to begin with. I had so many. I had. I had. Like I got to see who my real friends were. I got to see who showed love. You know, when you lose an account, or you know, anybody, just in general, you know, you're like, yo, listen, I lost my account. Like, I don't know what to do. If you could like post this shit, let people know. Like, I got to see who fucked with it and who didn't. Yeah, and it was nice. You know, like my my guys who I thought fucked with me fucked with me, and the guys who I thought didn't fuck with me kind of they didn't fuck with me. And it was good. It was it was a learning process. Know. Yeah, it, it was perfect because I knew that anyway. But it's nice to weed it out now. People don't understand, like, sometimes, especially with social media, you see a highlight reel of people's lives. So people like to think and, and, and dream, like, everyone else's life is so much better than theirs or so much easier than theirs, or if I could only be like or have it like X, Y, and Z. But, I mean, you know, you, you are in a good position in your life. But how long ago was this? It's only a couple of years ago, right? I'm pushing four years. So June would be four years. Four Since years ago, you had to basically start from scratch. Yeah. And just with your hustle and your reputation. Yeah. I start from the ground up, and I don't think people understand how many the times the, that, that the, the different tonight. hustle. That's it. That's like a that that, it's like that do or die. That was that, I didn't have. I was like up against the corner, like I couldn't. There was only one way to go for me. Well, that's the kind of story I love to hear on a fresh perspective because that is what it's all about. Like n nothing worthwhile is ever fucking easy, and uh, it, I'm glad you got to bounce back. And I think your your brand stronger now. Uh, your collaborations have been stronger lately since then. Everything mm -hmm. just seems to be upward from then. Sometimes just shedding negative energy around you is what you really need. Mm -hmm. People, places, things, whatever it is, they're just putting a bad impact on you. You got a new spot. Your new office is doper. Your new spot's doper. Your, your work's been... Oh, I mean, everything seems to be going. The trajectory is a hockey stick from then. It's exponential growth. Yeah. So that's good to hear. I'm happy where I'm at, man. I'm, I'm, you know what I mean? I bossed up and that's it. I leveled up. I'm good. What are some upcoming things you got going on? What are some new products you're working on? What should we be looking out for? I mean, fuck, I hate to sound like a fucking, I just, there's so much shit I can't talk about, but it's, I'm, I'm so excited to show people. It's like, it's not like I don't want to talk about it. I'm dying to talk about it. I just, you know, I got some shit I'm not allowed to touch right now. All right. We got some questions that we had from uh, the followers online that want to know, how did he meet Joe, David, and Wendy? You gave that story already. Mm -hmm. Your favorite watches and your best bang for the buck watch. What's your all-time favorite piece? Man, I love the AP skeleton, and I'm so upset that I got rid of that shit. I literally got rid of that what shit. What color? It was steel. I just liked the way it looked when it was bust down. But I'm talking about even plain. It's just such a nice piece. 
A P it's for A P the Audemars, right? The Audemars, is the A U D E A R. Skeleton watch. How much does that run? I mean, when, when I got it, it, they were they started. I remember they were like forty six thousand. Then they went up to sixty six, and then by the time I got it, it was like, I think I paid sixty seven thousand for it, and then now they're like a buck twenty. Let's say this year, watch fucking things are, are insane. It's, it's uh, I mean, I got I got I have no jewelry anymore. I got rid of all my everything that I had a uh, couple of years ago, and of course now this year, regular you know twenty seven thousand dollar mm-hmm. Rolex presidentials are going for forty. I hear, and I, I love a, a fifty nine eighty two rose gold. What's the, that? Uh, the uh, paddock. I'm not a tech guy. Uh, they're just so. It's too know, classy for my blood. Um, you know, sometimes I want to be classy. Too. <laughs> Actually, yeah, this is the mean, brand. Yeah, I think it's hard. I think it's hard. Uh, and then another one would be probably uh, you know I just love Rolex, man. I think Rolex is king. You, can't I think touch. the I think a rose gold or yellow gold presidential. The uh, I, the day date. Yeah, I just got myself a thirty six millimeter fucking turquoise not too long ago, and I'm keeping that forever. I'm gonna give it to my the kid. yellow gold like the bluish face. Yellow gold. Oh, my buddy got one. Yeah. Vinny got yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vinny's the yeah. Vinny's the homie. Shout out to Vinny. That's a fifty nine eighty right there, iced out. Damn. That's a two tone. Can't get near these watches. What do they go for right now? One fifty. One one fifty. Plain. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. They're going for like 200, damn near 200,000 fucking rose gold. That's called inflation, ladies and gentlemen. Man. Rolex has went through the roof, too. Uh, G's Cleaning New York wants to know who's the best sofa cleaner. Do he know, is. Do you know them? G's is the <laughs> best sofa cleaner, floor cleaner, everything cleaner. Can he clean leather couches? Because my couch needs to clean. Let me tell you something. Whatever issue you have, he'll handle when it comes to cleaning that guy. Are Sweet you, dude. Elizabeth wants to know are you still friends with people from high school? Yeah. And where'd you go to high school? I went to Ryan Junior High School. Ryan? Ryan. Where, I that's, got, in, that's in Queens. What part of Queens? Fresh Meadows. Fresh Meadows. And who are they? Uh, I got Teddy. Teddy Toe is one of my best friends my day ones. Uh, I got Richard Shaw, another fucking best friend day one. He's in Florida now, right? Yeah. Shout out Rich. I got Mike Serrero, Turnkey Auto, those guys. Those are all like my day ones. That's what's up. I got Mella, Jamie, so many people. Julia, fucking everyone. What makes... Uh, what makes melee stones have the most brilliance? Is that a thing? Melee, M- melee M- stones? millies. I mean, M E L E E. Yeah, they're just small, and when you know these are millies, you know when they're small, they just hit because they're just taking light. You know, you got all more these little area. yeah, you have all these little stones in this one area, and it just it just blinks. Kyle Tamones wants to know what's some advice you'd give somebody who wants to get into the jewelry game. Don't. <sighs> It's, I, I can't say don't, but it's it's a fucking headache. Everybody sees the glitz and like the pretty shit. Not Nobody sees the yeah. work behind it, you know. So, what would the advice you give to Kyle? Uh, fucking, I don't know. You, you make sure you have that hustle because it's a dirty game. A lot of money and hustle. Is getting an education in jewelry key to getting as far as you did in the industry from dexter i i did the i think the best education is actually like being in it and, and, and doing experience it. yeah like i didn't i don't have my gia you know what i mean i'm not i'm not ben baller doesn't have a GIA. i don't think jim ben baller does it either but like when you see things every day and it's in your face it it like I it becomes the only real way to learn yeah it becomes second nature all that other stuff like yeah you can go to school and learn it but like you have to be in it feeling it like that's, everything in life, in my that's opinion. how that's what I feel. Now, you and Ben Bola, how did that whole thing come to be? Because I I remember you guys almost having like a like a little riff online when I first started. Ben Bola was somebody that like you know I in the jewelry game like I I saw I'm like yo that's that's like that's kind of my lane that I would fuck with him. Yeah. He's from the culture. He gets it. He sees what's going on. Like I spoke his language. You want to be the East Coast version, right? You know, like I it, not wanted to be. I was. Yeah. Uh, that's that's. I'm saying that's at, at that point. Yeah, I was just like, how do I like if I knew that. The day that I blow up, it's either me and him are going to be rivals or we're going to be, you know, homies. So I reached out to him one day. My friend Dana, I got my, I got his number through Dana, my boy Dana in uh, L.A. And I was like, yo, you got Ben's number? He's like, yeah, let me get it. So Dana hollered at Nikki Diamonds because they were tough, uh, tight. And Nikki Diamond and, and Ben are, are close. So um, I got his number and I was like, yo, look, I was coming out. I was making a shirt that said your jewelry and shit. It's just that's how I felt because everybody <laughs> yeah. in the diamond district was just copying the shit that I was yeah, doing. And, talking and, it was be- and it was becoming frustrating, you know? It's just like, and I was like young and I was just, that's the that's the type of time I was on. I was on that type of energy. And I was like, look, 
this is who I am. I'm here to stay. I'm here to change this shit and take it or leave it. So I hit up Ben. Like, yo, look, I'm coming out with this shirt. And you don't know me. I fuck with you. I, I like what you're doing. I'm coming out with a shirt. Would you like to get in on it? Would you like to do a collab? And he was like, oh, we spoke for a second. He's like, yeah, let's do it. And the fact that I think that he he fucked with me early, it just, we we clicked and it, it just worked. That's because cool everybody was trying to fuck with Ben. You know what I mean? Yeah. Ben was the guy. He's one of the OGs. He's the OG. Yeah. You can't take that away from him. Ben's the fucking Who else? Man. Like custom jewelry like that, like for, for this type of like shit that we like. Who else would you really put in that category? At that time? Period. At that time, I, I didn't think anyone was there at that time. Now, now, like, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are doing cool shit. I know that, but I'm saying, like, is it, is it in his level, on your level? Like, I, I think at that time, th th there weren't too many people. You know, people did Johnny their, Dang, I guess you'd say. Johnny Dang. I mean, you know, I, Avianis did their thing. Raffaello did his thing. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, we all, you know, yeah, Christine came in, they did their thing. But, like, at that time, I just, I didn't look at anybody as competition. But, like, I was talking like it because it's just, there's a lot of internal shit where everyone had drama. And, like, I had to let all that go. A lot of therapy and a lot of, sh I just let all that anger go. Where do you, another one, where did you find I like Joe Wendy now. from? What you say? I said another, another person asking, where did you find Joe Wendy from? Uh, in the streets. Lieutenant Mike Almonte wants to know, uh, when is there going to be a fresh uh, Yuna and Lieutenant Mike collab? Lieutenant Mike's my guy, man. He's a fucking awesome he's he's, dude. he's a fucking sweetheart, man. I love what he was doing, man. Yeah. We need more people like him. Like a million more of him. Yeah, yeah, man. The world will be a much better place. We did that for, uh, we did that uh, the toy drive a couple of places in the, around the city a few weeks ago, Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. And then now he wants to... Um, I'd love to see if we can get you involved in some capacity. He wants to, I guess, I've met this him back. I tell him back when we get done. He's doing a coat drive in in the boroughs uh, for February 13th. Right before Valentine's Day, it's mm -hmm. called the Spread Love mm -hmm. the Brooklyn Way. Right. And uh, him and uh, the guy from Steve from Iconic Sports are going to put together some kind of coat drive. So I should find what the details are. But if I'm in town, I'll fuck with it. I'll, whatever he's doing, I like. He's just putting the word out. You know what okay. I mean? Okay. We could uh, definitely do that. Are you Jewish or Russian? Nice I'm question. I'm a Russian speaking Sephardic Jew. You hear Val working out in the other room? <laughs> Fucking Val. <laughs> that was the worst, but the best at the same time. Um, how real do you think uncut gems is based on my experience in the in the Jewish district? I so that so let me break this down. It, it, that movie was made about a jeweler that happened to be a gambler. So as far as the gambling goes, if you're a gambler, that's what it's like. Yeah. But that's not what jewelers, you know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of jewelers out there that, like, they handle their business. It's not, it's not But like they probably that. are those schmucks, too, who are I mean, borrowing you know, and stealing. I mean, and... You're, you're dealing in a place where, you know, you're, you, you, there's, there's a lot of money coming in and out. So it's easy to fuck up if you don't have any, like, you know, willpower or any kind of, you know. It's also, I feel, and it's such a small block. That if you fuck up a couple of times, everyone's gonna know your shit. Right. So that's that, that, that's what I'm saying. Your, like your reputation on that tree goes like this. If somebody says you're canceled, you're canceled. You can't go. You can't go anywhere. Yeah. So a lot of people don't realize that. Like your credit has to be good, not on paper. I'm talking about like word of like. Yeah, on the street. You know. And then I also feel like people don't understand also with the um, with how it goes or that is, there's a lot of people on the street. But then there's guys up in the buildings that kind of supply the raw diamonds and all the, that kind of stuff. The ground level is the ground level. The dudes on top is where the money's at because they're they're not doing they're supplying guys like us. You know what I mean? So those are the guys with the big bucks. Yeah, those are the powerhouse guys. Yeah. I had a, a question from E Breezy. How has the jewelry game changed since you first got in? I mean, it evolved so much, man. You see, I mean, you see, it went from box setting to flower setting. To like all this stuff. Well, like, the trends definitely change often every yeah. few years, but I feel like it's also evolved in a good way. Yo, I remember when they started bringing, remember we were wearing chains 24, 28, 26. Yeah. Like this to me, like so much cleaner. Six years ago, I was like, I'll never do that shit. Yeah, Look it was at like me. Girl now. shit back then. Now it's everyone wears an oxygen short it's shit. It's just, it's fire. Yeah. And it's, 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 sometimes it takes a second, and I'm, I'm upset that it took me a second. It's like when you it's like when you look back at old pictures and you see yourself wearing like the long huge shit. baggy yeah. clothes. It's the same thing. I look back at pictures. I just saw a picture earlier. I had, a big, I had my big gold Cuban on. It came down below my fucking chest. Yeah. Like, what the fuck was I thinking? I mean, Mob Deep had it a, fucking fucked up for us. I mean, everybody had those. And then remember that? Remember that one piece you did, or you had that uh, like that three kilo fuck. Remember there was that there was that one time when it was a Cuban uh, Cuban necklace 
like a battle going on where everyone wanted to see who can make the heaviest cube mm-hmm. deck in there there was. And it started off with someone making a kilo and then two kilo plies had one, mm-hmm. Jay-Z had mm-hmm. one, 50 had then one. Then we had the four. We had the four. That was the biggest one at the time. And then like recently, um, I think there was a 10 kilo one that we had the other oh, day. 22 yeah. pounds, right? Yeah. Wow. What the fuck are you gonna do with a twenty-two pound lot? Twenty-two pound necklace. Wow. <laughs> It's 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 it's, like it's work shit, wearing it's... a five hundred grand fucking Cuban. Yeah, when I had the when I had the AP, that was the the brick. Mm-hmm. That shit was heavy. I got rid of it because of that. Like too heavy. Like my my left arm was getting stronger than my right. <laughs> um, we also cut gems. Ask him who Joey Coronado is. Trust me, Joey Coronado is one of my closest friends, man. Shout out Joey Coronado. He's, Joey Coronado. I don't know if this best. is him or this is just somebody. Who, who is it? Fresh short? Is it? Yeah, yeah that's, it, that's him, fucking Joey. That's my dude. Um, are you single? You don't have to answer. I, I just... feel like that's a question that's, you know what I mean? It's uh, That's like personal shit. I don't like putting my personal stuff out there. Okay. Vinny wants to know why does he charge so much? It's quality. Enjoy, Qual- the, enjoy, hey, the quality. enjoy the quality, guys. You know what I mean? Do you do any work in Texas? Uh, so my friend, my friend, my friend, the shout out to the Quintanillas, my friend Connor and his dad, man, they, they, not only are they good friends, they're just, you know what I mean? They, they, they rock with me. They've been rocking with me. They, what do they do? They, uh, they're in oil. Uh, oil money is different. Oil money is different, but they, they, some of the coolest dudes in the world. You've seen the shit we've done with them when we go. Out there, nothing but love, man. They've been treated. They 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 took me in. They treat me like family. They, they look like fun. Good, 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 good dudes. Like literally, you can't have a bad time with them. They're with the shits, and they're with the shits at a level that like is unfuckwittable. That's what's up, you know. Damn. And they're gentlemen, you know what I mean? Those they're, down south, gentlemen. Je, je, gentlemen, like real Southern. gentlemen. The, the, the fucking Leo Q, the, the G. Southern hospitality down there. They're just good, good cats. They don't, you know, they don't. They don't run around with their nose in the air. They're fucking on the ground level. Keep it smooth. You bring them anywhere. That's what's up. They'll party anywhere. The other thing I wanted to kind of touch in was uh, what we do here often, the fresh perspective is, I think kind of touching on what you were saying earlier from what 2020 taught you. So if you had to really boil it down to a pivotal moment in, in, in your life and in your career that you feel like was the make or break or what, what made you who you are today, uh, the story that could be inspiring to somebody else. What would you say that was? If you were to think of a time in your life that defined kind of where you are now. We're talking uh, could be anything. A, 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 a situation that happened. Could be whatever, a mental epiphany. It could be a hard time, troubling time. It could be when I, when something I, that just changed the direction of your life. When, what it was that, that put you at where you're at now, yeah. you're grateful for now looking back. When, when I first started working, I remember the money that I was making was shit. And, you know, it was either like going back home or like being in the city. And I remember being in the city for the little time that I was there. My, I was able to network and the network was just like, it grew so quick that I was, I remember there was clubs that I couldn't even get into. And now I'm like hanging out with the owner. Well, so you have the gift of gab. But it's not even, but it's also, I'm in a, I'm in a space where like, I get to pick and choose the guys, you know, there's people who spend money with me. And then there's people who spend money with me that I like. Hmm. So you get what I'm saying? So yeah. I get to pick and choose people that like I fuck with. And it just, it, it brought me to just such a different space. And I was upset that, I don't know if it's answering the question, but I was upset that I didn't come to the city earlier. As far as what, like moving from Queens? Just, it just coming to the city, just finagling and doing what just I have the big to do. dog land. You know, it's, if you go work it there, it's literally, I, I swear. Yeah. What they say you can make anywhere. Right? Yeah, but and I didn't want to say that, but that's that's, the that's truth. what it is. Sometimes the corniest shit is the truest shit. Yeah. It's actually usually the case. Yeah. It's just been it's just been said so many times that it's corny. It's like fucking YOLO. Like who says YOLO? No, but at yeah, the end yeah. of the but at the end of the day, fucking YOLO. You know yeah. what I mean? Right, hundred percent, man. What else we have to look at? What can you tell us about? What what else we can, can we know about? You have any clothes coming out? Are you doing, are you doing any like any apparel? I mean, I, if I do apparel, it's like fun shit, sweaters and stuff like that. Like I'll put some stuff out just like for my people. And then if anybody wants to just like. I know you, know. you and, Ro- and Ronnie from Kith go mm-hmm. way back. So How did that relationship happen? Ronnie and I, we actually. I, I look at Ronnie as a mentor. But before that, we we met on some like drama shit. I was fucking. 
I was like on a street with my girlfriend at the time. I was twelve. Um, and you were twelve. He said I was twelve. <laughs> I was on. I was. I, I know you go that far. I, yeah, I was. I was on the street waiting for the bus to go to the city with my friend Mella, Vivian, and Kenny. Twelve year old drama. Basically three girls, you know. And um, he pulled up with six kids, and he was like, "Yo, what are you looking at?" And I was like. The fuck I'm here with like three girls. You got like six kids on a bike, you know? And there's one kid I spotted there who's one of my best friends right now, Teddy, I was just saying. And I was like, I know that kid. He goes to my school. I don't know any of these other kids, but when I go to school, I'm going to fuck him up. <laughs> so I didn't say anything. I was like, all right, cool. Monday comes around. Me and Teddy fucking, I waited for him all day. Like I had my mom drive me to school fucking like 6.30. From 6.30 to 8.30, I'm at school waiting for this kid. Uh, Teddy gets out of the car and me and him just get it on. My friend Mello, the girl that I was with, calls me. She's like, why'd you do that to him? I know him. He's like, a, you know, he's a good kid. So I called him and I apologized after school. I was like, yo, my bad. But what's up with your boy, Ronnie? The fuck? What was that the other day? That, that was, you know, this was a Saturday. I'm yeah. talking a day after. It was Monday. And he's like, I don't know, bro. Like, I don't know what the fuck happened. We, you know, we're fucking kids, whatever the fuck. And then, like, we ended up all squashing it. I ended up the same age? Yeah. 82 babies. All 82. And then me and Ronnie got super tight when we were kids. We would fuck around. And then, like, we all kind of went our separate ways. We were like, you know, once we started driving, we all kind of, like, dipped yeah. off and went into our own thing. And then... Uh, Where did he start from? Because how did he get into this whole... Because I, 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 I see what's going on the last couple of years. Nah, but like the thing confused. is, what people don't know about Ronnie is... And, and I'm, 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 I'm here to vouch, and I have everybody in Fresh Meadows that can, that can vouch for him. A shout out to Maze City, by the way. But everybody in Fresh Meadows can vouch for this kid. This kid, I've watched him work from literally the age of 12. Like, we, I would get mad that he couldn't come out, like, on a Saturday because he would work at David Z. That kid is from the culture. Not a culture vulture. He's always been in the culture. We used to come see him at fucking David Z. I hate Z. That term so much. I know, but I mean, you know, I could vouch. That kid is a real hip-hop head. He knows his music. He knows... He, but how did he get into, like, where did the, so I, I just see him now doing collabs with every fucking he re, yeah, he revives I've ever heard of. He revives fucking brands. He's just, he's just a doctor. But where he did fucking, it start? Like, where, I, where, how, what was his pathway at all? Not to get too off topic. I'm, I'm I just mean, curious. And then, I mean, he did, he did his David Z thing, you know. I'm, I'm, I don't know what David Z is. So David Z is basically like a journeys. Okay. Like the, yeah, yeah. The, the shoe store and all mm -hmm. that. It was like that. But they were like fucking everywhere. And um, I, uh, his uncle was David C. He worked under him. And then I guess, you know, like everybody else, you have to eventually spread your wings and fly. He and saw he something that stores. they didn't see. And yeah, he opened up a store and, you know, he's Shout out to them because, I mean, they're doing my boy Low works down at the spot in Miami. I mean, they he's he's on another level. Like, I mean, that the boy, collaborations are I don't know if I don't know if in the history of of anything, who's done more collaborations than him. He's got Disney. I, BMW. Yo, he's he, he's, he had a car. He's come a out. B, I just got one, by the way. God bless him for that fucking BMW collaboration. Jesus. The Christ. M4. The M's. The M4. You got one of those? I got one. I'm waiting for that shit. July. They are saying. Yo, pull up, pull up the uh, the, the kit, kit M4. M4. What is it? The K I T H BMW M4. See, I, I was I'm torn on the M4. If there was any M4, you know I mean, what? This is the one. When he sent me the picture of it, he's like, "Yo, don't show anybody this shit." I'm like, "All right, cool." No, but I saw it. I was like. Just those front I hate that grill. You yeah. know how much they grew on me. Yeah, they're so fire. They're so I fire. I still hope it grows on me. I love the. I love his interior. He did all the details. Did on the yeah. He did, he, he did. It's thing. not his fault. The grill looks like that. If it's all black, it's, it's gonna be, you can hide a little I, bit. I got but... the. I got the frozen gray. So there's what. So he came out with them in three colors: the 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 flat, the matte black, the frozen white, and the frozen. I think they're all frozen, but I think the frozen gray I got. How many of them are ever made? Like the, I think 144 or 140. Wow. This and I think there's only 44 in, in the U.S. I think this car is something that's... Gonna, actually, that looks kind of dope. Right it's there. sick. That's untouched. That's stock. Yeah, that's wild. That's wild. And I've been an M kid. I've had a bunch of M's growing up. So, like, I know what... I know what, I just know the, the pedigree of that car. You've always been a Beamer guy? I've always been a Beamer guy. I love a Benz. I love the way they sound. I love I love a Benz, but I've always been Beamers a Beamer. Beamers are more upon the drive. Yeah. Yeah, I had, I've had almost every Beamer... A number there I like stick growing up, you know. So my shit was always. What are you driving now? Uh, so gonna... you have the you have the M4 coming, you have the Hummer coming. I got. Oh, hey, gonna, what are you do a lot of stuff in Williamsburg? I mean, I have my mama's house. And shit. <laughs> I got some places, but um, I always liked I always liked them. I had a couple of myself, and it was it was they they always. I'm talking about from the day that I got the car, 
to the day that I returned it, I beat the shit out of it. And they always, they would just, it's an engine. It's a real engine. Yeah, it's a driver. It's a driver machine. It's a, it's a, it's a like, real, it, it's, like, it could take a beating that car. I, I like never had issues with them. It goes where you point. Like, in the Mercedes, I feel like sometimes you're like, you're almost like you're in a yacht. You're going to fucking turn the thing 20 times. With BMW, it's like this. That's it. Change lanes a little. I love I'm Mercedes and fire too, though. My Different. man, Nigel Sylvester Different. got that S65. That shit is incredible. Yeah. The G-Wagons are fire. The new G-Wagons are, they just, I don't like the way they drive, though. It's a, but it, it's more of a, for me, it's aesthetics. It's like a That's big, what I'm saying. it's aesthetically, it's a pretty car. It's a boss ass car. It's a boss. It's got car. a, it's got a presence that like, mm -hmm. like very little cars on the road have. It, you pull up and like people, I had a one that was all murdered out. People would be like, just like seeing like, who the fuck is that when it pulled up places? Like, yeah, that shit. Just me. <laughs> you know? Crazy, crazy, crazy. I'm looking to get the Escalade or the, maybe the Hummer. Listen, I'm getting it in June. If you like it, I could set you up. You got a hook for me, AJ? I, I can plug you with some people. We'll make it happen. On round two, not on round one. You skipped round one already. Yeah. You missed out. Sorry. What else we got? I'll go back to these. Uh, a few more questions from the people that really want to know. What are some behind the scenes from things from the Diamond District that people would never guess? How grimy it is. It's, it, Why do you think that is? I mean, because it just, I'm just in this like one place that's just concentrated with just jewelers and jewelry everywhere. It's so cutthroat. It's like you know. I think it's just because it's so saturated. People it's doing the saturated. Same thing. It's just it's it's vicious. I guess yeah. If you had a if you had one city block that was all sneaker stores, I think it'd be it's the same like, thing. Come on. Yeah. yeah. But that's how you know. I do you plan on moving off there, or just yeah. necessary to be there? Absolutely. Absolutely. What are some other aspirations you have outside of jewelry? You're still a dreamer. I know you're a creator. I'll always, I'll always be a dreamer. Yeah. So know? like you have, and, and nothing is too crazy. What do you like? What do you picture yourself I, like? If I you could do anything, if I was like right now, you're gonna do your dream fucking gig. You're gonna do your dream creation right now. And you're gonna get paid however. Whatever I'd you have, want. I'd have a fantasy factory like Rob Deerdeck. That's what's up. You know what I mean? With a jewelry store built instead of like a skateboard, just a jewelry shop built inside with Joe, Wendy, David, and just do wild shit all day and invite everybody that I know. That's what's up. We gotta make that happen. That's sometime. that's that's like a dream of mine. That's if why I, I, I always love Rob Your Deck for that shit. If I have Powerball, I'm gonna do that. You know yeah. who has one very similar to that in a creative aspect? Uh, uh Dominic. Which which shoe Dom? surgeon? That's my boy. Bro, he I took his class. Um He's the best. I see I, I saw that. And uh he all oh, first off, he's Awesome. He's the best. Yeah, he's fucking amazing. But uh, his thing is like, I'm like, wow, like this is what I would do if I was in this position. Like he had his big ass warehouse, mm -hmm. and he has all this ridiculous machinery to make custom sneakers, to cut the leathers, to get rooms full of every pattern and you could ever imagine. He has a full basketball court. But in he's there. forget that he's just the cool. He's cool. Yeah, and he's fucking and he's nasty. What he does, he's nasty. His shoes are. I think he's like. I think that guy Mash does the best like painting. Right, but they're different. Mash was a, was a tattoo artist before. But saying, but like the guy Mash, he makes like he'll take an existing shoe and and change it by color. We're, we're talking about from the ground up. Yeah, Dominic, he fucking. I'm not taking away anything from any of no, them. No, no. I mean, obviously, like, you see, yeah, I, they're, I, they're, I've used both. They're of them, both but, fire, but this is a level of just like. So when I went there, I was I, I didn't realize what it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna you were gonna go in there. We were working on the Air Jordan one, so I thought it was gonna be like, okay, I'm so dumb. I thought we were gonna like take this off and then put a new one on. It's like no, 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 no. You you're I, doing I, it. I walked in and it, it all was was a was a sole. A sole. And then he gave me you know the the cutouts of all of the pieces were supposed to be, and you had to make it from scratch and put the whole thing together, wrap it around, the last thing stretching around. I have such a different respect for those shoes, and now I see why they cost so much. Dude, I remember when it came out, and they're like, his uh, shoe surgeon's shoes are probably like thirty five hundred dollars average. That's he gifted me a pair of Nigel Sylvester ones. I'm like scared to wear them. Don't. I, like, I, I don't even want to yeah, touch them. I just wouldn't. Damn that! And also, that's the fucking the your new piece, right? That Rolex. Yeah. That's crazy. What is that face? It's a tur it's a real turquoise face. It's a real stone. Oh, it's like a piece it's, of turquoise. They, they take a piece of turquoise and they, they slice it. It's a slab. God damn. So I just got that. I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep that thing forever. Give it to my kids. That's a cool they, piece. They started Super at 30, unique. they started at 39,000. Right now, they're probably you can't get one less than probably, I don't know, 53k. Oh. And I, I predict them to be hundred k in the next like five years, and then I don't know. 
I don't know, later on when it's like fucking 20, 30 years, I don't know. How did you team up with Suresh? <laughs> Yo, Suresh has been godsend, man. Suresh is like one of the... the Those who don't kill. know, Suresh is a you know, producer, videographer. He's fucking he's exactly Very talented guy he's but he's like he gets it he's exactly what i needed you get what i'm saying and he came in at just the right time when i was working on the greg and joe show uh he was one of the so he was one of the guys in the team that i hired to, to film the show mm -hmm. and me and him just ended up clicking and he just understood what needed to be done what i needed from him he and saw your vision yeah he saw it and he was always able to bring it to life and anytime i called him he was there anytime Come, yo, he'd come meet me with his hair fucked up, <laughs> but he was there. I and because of that, because of that, I'll I'll forever bring him with me wherever I go. Like, like that's that's my brother. He's another guy that it's been amazing to see his growth in the last couple of years. Yeah, I, all I want to do is got fucking kick him into the fucking <laughs> yo, that's the way you gotta go, sir. I just want to see him win. And he is now because I sure. know where, I know when I I, I know when space I met him, the space he was when I met him now, when I met him and to where he is at now. It's like night and day. Yeah. So I just want to see how far we we can all go. He's in fucking Dubai every other week. Dude, now, I, see. I wish that kid nothing, but I just want to see him. There's nothing to, I, I love watching him put out fire content and then he takes a photo of himself and it's just a smile. How the fuck does he do that shot? I don't know if, if we're allowed to know where it, it's like his first person view. Is he ever one of those GoPros on his chest? I can't, I can't. That's none of my business. I can't tell you what his secret sauce are. Secret sauce, Ravash. I gotta find that's out. That's expensive. And he's expensive. Yeah. People hit me up all the time. Yo, what's up? Can I use your guy? I'm like, look, like, yes, the but it's kid, gonna cost you. No, but it is. And yeah. it's not like, you know, like, no, you gotta, you listen, you gotta, pay listen, for you want, you want, you want that shit that, like, especially, you, I, I heard, uh, I don't know, I forget who it was. I, I, I want to say it was Lil Baby put up a quote on Instagram. <laughs> Uh, but it was something like when you go into these designer stores, when you go into Louis, mm -hmm. you don't haggle. You pay what the fucking would it cost. Right. But everyone feels like, well, for some reason, when they're talking to their friend or or someone they know, like they got to get a deal. It's like, why are you going to give a stranger the money with no questions asked, but then look to try to get a deal or something for free from your boy? I, I never understood. I, never I mean, said because you're, you're, I mean, because like, you're dealing with them direct. You know what I mean? But it's like something like that, like, like especially with someone like a videographer, like that's his, it's his time. You're paying for his time. There's never been a time where he was like, I'm like, yo, Suresh, what are you going to charge me for this? And he's like, yo, dad, I'm like, all right, I won't even argue with him because he's worth it and he he helped he helped me build out most of my shit that's going on right now you know what i'm saying like he's part of my team so like he's there for the cause and he helps was he working so i saw also recently you were doing like like a short film it looked like or something like that. yeah so like, no, no it's not, so it's not a short film we're actually working on a movie right now called 25 seconds oh really yeah it's a whole fucking it's movie. a it's a real movie that's the Russia's thing also? It's going to be all of us. We're all rocking. Yeah. But they got a big ass film crew. Yeah, we got a, you know, the executive producers were doing shit. Oh, shit. When's that going to be coming out? Uh, I, I'm thinking June 2021. We're almost finished wrapping up. This year? Yeah. Oh, shit. Mm -hmm. And how are you trying to release it on like a streaming service? How are you going to do that? Uh, we, we're, we're not sure yet. It's an independent film. So we'll, we'll when the time, we're working it out now. I need a that's actually man. a project I could talk about. That's, you know, so I'd love to, to hear more to, about to, that. So man. my man, Brandon Crochet, and he's, uh, the director and he's just putting it together right now. He wrote the script. Yeah, and he he brought you in on it or you wrote the script too. You were in uh, no, he brought me in on. He, he saw me and he was like, "Yo, listen, I got a part for you that I'd really love to, for you to play, and and I feel like you would do good in this space." So I was like, "All right, let me let me see what this is about." We'll make How long are you shooting that now? Mm, couple months. That's something that I could see you. Is that something that you'd want to pursue acting more more acting gigs? I but I but yeah. Like, you know, I like I, 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 I would do like, I don't know how deep because I don't want to disrespect the acting culture and, and all that shit. Like, I don't know how like serious I would take you myself. Play, but you could also play yourself. Right. I mean. You are a character. You are enough of a character right. in your own personality that you don't need to like assume another personality. Like, right. I can cast you in a role that you make sense. Right. I don't know how deep I can go into it, but I would, I would definitely try. Yeah, like I'm, I would love to do it in any kind of movie, but I wouldn't want to pretend to be something I'm nothing like. A, like right. I'm, not, I'm not a good actor. But it's not. But the thing, like, it's, it's. Acting is not easy, man. No, no, hell it's, no. It's not easy. Not to be good at it. Yeah, it's not easy. It's 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 awkward. It's uncomfortable. Yeah, people. There's like it's twenty people too. on set. Yeah, it's it's Take, a lot. Do it again. Do it again. Do it's it again. a lot. It's a lot. And that's expensive. It's expensive. Yeah. Are you involved in a in the financial part? Are you backing oh, it all? Uh, I mean, I got a little piece of that that's too. Yeah. 
It's awesome, man. And it's gonna call what you said? Uh, twenty five seconds. And what's the story about? So it's about two brothers. It's about me having. So my my brother got me in a whole sh world of shit right now. You know, I just got out of jail. I'm trying to like be smooth and not get into trouble and get my life on track. I got problems with women. You know, just everything's all fucked up. Do you and, like the main character in this movie? Yeah. Oh wow, mm -hmm. that's dope. And uh, is your real brother playing in this movie? Or no, no, no. Okay. No. Joe, this dude Joe's playing the movie. He's actually a good actor as well. But uh, he got me in a world of shit with some mobsters, and now I'm trying to fucking figure this shit out. That's never a good thing. Yeah. Are you playing your, is your own name? Uh, yeah. Like going by yourself? Yeah. That's what's up, too. Mm hmm. Great I'll, thing, I'll you know, you create a control a little bit. You got, you know. It's like you never seen the guy who's like, the, who's like that Spanish, like the, like the, like the West Side, like Cholo Gangster. Mm -hmm. who's, he's Hector in every movie. Yeah. Like that guy. I can just, be Greg in any movie. Yeah. Just let me be Greg. You yeah. know what I mean? Or like the other guy, Danny Trejo. Is right. Always just right. Him. There's always that one character that's the same. I don't mind. Adam Sandler's been the same guy the whole time. That's why when we saw Uncut Gems, true. And I'm happy I was in that movie because that was like him playing a role he's never played before. That shit. But it was still him somehow. Like it was. It was amazing. It was just that. tough. To, it, it's just tough to see him that way and getting beat up and all that. All that is just wild. Yeah. You know. You know. So like, I can play Greg forever, <laughs> as long as they have you know. There'll always be a, a spot for me. Yeah, fuck yeah. Um, anything else? Any other, any other products you can talk about? I'm trying to get you to just spill the beans on one no, of them. I, 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 I ask you like 11 times. No, like, I, just, I, I, I just don't want to fucking... I don't want to shoot myself in the leg. Let me let me live on this. You're going to see it. It's going to be out soon. You're going right. to see it. We'll have to check back in. But we got reservations to go out to dinner, so I think it's a good place to cut it. Um... Thank you for coming on, bro. I appreciate you telling your story. Uh, everything you're doing right now is super fucking dope. Uh, I'm one of those people who's not afraid to tell people when I think you've always dope. you've always been you've always been a one with me. That's why I'm here. You've always been you've always gave me my roses and and flowers and all that shit. And yeah, because I just I'm I'm just not one of those people. A lot of people like they get caught up in like their own ego or like not wanting to feel like a dick rider or whatever it is. It's like. If someone is doing something dope, I'm gonna tell them. I don't care if it's a guy, if it's a girl, if I whatever the fuck it is, I'm not doing it for any of the reasons of the fact that I never want I know everybody at the end of the day. I don't care who you are, I don't care how confident you are. Everybody needs reassurance. Everybody has like a little bit, sometimes self-doubt in the head, or even like whatever it is, or they're going through shit. And when you tell when you so if you see somebody doing some dope shit, like I don't care if it's as little as he's wearing a cool pair of sneakers, mm -hmm. he's rocking a dope outfit, he came up with a cool idea, whatever the fuck it is, he's working on a business plan. If you think it's dope, tell him. Like fucking tell him. Everybody needs that reassurance. Everybody needs I wanna, that boost. I wanna give one dude his flowers tonight and 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 on on this show. Uh Jose, no limit. Jose, my fucking that's, brother. That's that's my that's that's my fucking dude. That's somebody I looked up to. That's somebody when I was in a, in a dark place, in the jewelry game, I looked at him and I'm like, yo, this is a humble, cool human being that wasn't scared to help me get to where I gotta go. And he showed he 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 showed me the ropes a little bit in 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 outside of the jewelry shit that like I appreciate him every day. Jose is one of those people who is super hardworking, super successful. I fucking I don't even know how many body shops he has now. I think it's he is 20. he is killing. He's fucking but out but of his but mind. forget forget all that. I'm talking about him as a human being. But I'm saying, he, but he's so down to earth and he's never, very straightforward. No fucking none no, of this shit. Not a weasel. Not behind your back. No backstabbing bullshit. And Great you need him, he's there. I hate that I can't chill with him all the time because we just he's just we're both busy. Yeah. But like it's always the same genuine love. I fuck with him. That's my guy. Yeah, man. He uh, anytime I mean even some things as little as like getting a blowout on the parkway, bro. Any o'clock in the morning, dude. He stands fucking OJ there. Anything with. The, with the flatbed anything with my the cars ass multiple Any, multiple times anything with the car shout out jose no limit he hooked me up and he did my car for me um anybody that needs car work done or god forbid you have some kind of accident you gotta say no limit they have locations everywhere so if you're anywhere near new york and even now he's got a couple in la i'm trying to get do one in miami with him because i'm getting you know in boat. miami that little island that you could only pull up on a boat in on that little Fisher. island sure that Fisher island yeah that's where Jose's gonna open up his next shop. <laughs> it's like fucking, he's, he's gonna, everywhere. He's gonna sell out with a for a crazy number one day. He's gonna have like twenty five shops and sell them for. Like God bless him. Uh, that's all. I'm, thirty million. I, and that's all. That's we'll all. Be I in want. Puerto Rico, just chilling. That's all. Just hopefully, we get an invite to the condo. I'm just trying to sell these fucking these uh coasters. Before we go, how, how, well, this is like a resin. Yeah, my so my my boy uh, Detroit Wick Doug from Detroit Wick. Shout out to him too. He he put these together for me, man. Super and he just dope. look how clean it is. He's Can just, they still buy these or this is 
was limited run. I'm, pro I'm probably gonna do. I like to do limited. Sh I don't like to give people. You know, no, if you missed out. You missed out. Yeah. You missed out. You missed Hell out. Yeah. Get it when it's when it's out. We'll put all the links below to Greg's uh, social media, to his well, business pages, where you can find his products, wherever you can buy mm -hmm. everything. And uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Greg, thanks for coming. Appreciate you, brother. Yo, I'll be back in two years. <laughs> I'm out of here. Later, guys.